Okay, boxes, the trunks are good. We went over the instructions earlier. As a reminder, obey my commands at all times. Protect yourself at all times. Good luck. Touch them up. A couple of weeks ago, Sullivan Barrera tweeted, some people say this, hard work pay off, but no explain what hard is. I had day with no food, no bed to sleep, and no money for feed my daughter. March 3 is day I waiting for since I was on the farm learning boxing. We'll see if he has enough. <laughs> Test Bivol and find out what Bivol is really all about. The reference to the farm, of course, uh, the famed La Finca in Cuba, where Cuban amateurs go to learn their craft, and like all of the others who have had hundreds of fights in Cuban uniforms and amateur boxing, uh, Barrera lived on La Finca for several years. In both of his last two fights, Roy Jones against Felix Valera and Joe Smith, he went down in the first round and then came back to control the entire rest of the fight. So let's see what happens in round one here. Well, it's going to be a tough one, Jim. I think he's more uh, uh, aware of the fact that Bivol is a quick starter because Bivol has quick hands. So I think he came out with the plan of not getting hit or caught with a big shot early in this fight against Bivol because he doesn't want to let Bivol get the... Uh, Momentum in his favor that early. Bivol has a stiff jab, good footwork, he's athletic, and he has shown real pop against lesser opponents than Sullivan Barrera. Barrera told us yesterday that he knows he has to be very careful in the first round, and then he feels he can get down to work after he gets out of that first round danger zone where he's been dropped, dropped twice in recent fights, as you mentioned, Jim. Makes a lot of sense. The only difference being Bivol is dangerous in two, three, four, five, just about every round they're going to fight. That's true, but Barrera is better in rounds two, three, four, five, and six uh, usually than he is the first round as well. So I can understand why he wants to avoid that early contact. And better than any opponent Bivol has seen to this point in his career. But right now, Bivol is getting chances to trade with Barrera, and that may play in his favor. The goal has the quicker hands. Without a doubt. And, and I'd say also he's the bigger puncher. But Pereira, you know, just because you have the quicker hands and, the, and you're the bigger puncher doesn't mean there aren't things your opponent can do with timing and using his experience to take you into deeper water and finding out what happens when you're met with resistance. And he may be the bigger puncher, but Something, something I sense that Barrera may have the heavier hands. Meaning like Barrera has some George Foreman type, type punches. When he hits you, your whole body jokes. Both fights tonight play into what happens at the summit of the heavily populated light heavyweight division. Max, as we get ready for the end of round one, you're going to be leading us into a, a picture of the division where the divisional kingpin, the lineal champ, is still, after all these years, Adonis Stevenson, a guy who has been more or less hiding in Montreal and seemingly avoiding top competition. One of the reasons why Sergey Kovalev is considerably more prominent on a global level than he is Adonis Stevenson. Oftentimes throughout boxing history, the lineal champ um, doesn't defend well enough or against good enough opposition or often enough and a consensus forms around someone else That's what happened around Kovalev and then Ward beat Kovalev So now the divisions wide open here You're gonna see Kovalev tonight be of course against Pereira you're watching right now Stevenson as you mentioned still the li linear champ lineal champ Better be was an amateur star and he's a tough pro and he's undefeated Vodzik you've seen on our air also good was dropped once but recovered well and has some nice wins Barrera obviously tonight you're gonna see him Badu Jack after being a hot prospect who was upset by a first round knockout against Derek Edwards has really fought his way into contention and has earned a title shot upcoming against Stevenson in a couple of months. Better be is fascinating. He's a big puncher and there are some who think that he's the best fighter in the division. But tonight against Sergey Kovalev in our main event, you'll be seeing Igor Mikalkin, a fighter who four times in the amateurs faced Better Biev and beat him three of the four. That had to be about styles because Mikalkin is a very different style from Better Biev or the other big punchers in this division. I'll tell you what, at the end of that last round, Bivol threw about a three or four punch combination countering 
uh, Sullivan's attack, and that was some really good stuff for an up and coming prospect or up and coming late hit. That, that right hand on the button, Roy, just looked like it wobbled B Barrera for a second. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Ebola, in my view, has the potential to emerge as a sort of light heavyweight Gennady Golovkin, an athlete with real punching power in both hands. Cut over Bivol's right eye, it seems, right in the corner. Yep, what I, what I see different about him, though, Jim, is he, he does more step-back countering than does uh, Triple G. Triple G is more of a front-foot fighter. Bivol is a middle, back, and front-foot fighter, so I think he's a little bit more diverse than uh, Triple G. And now a sense of urgency may emerge for Bivol as blood is trickling from the cut just outside his right eye. Never been cut before has Dimitri Bivol, at least according to the biographical material we're given. Bivol seems to be, I agree, Roy, not as much of a come forward, aggressive uh, power boxer puncher, but he is a boxer puncher who is looking constantly to apply his skills aggressively and offensively. That's what makes him fun to watch. And what makes Barrera fun to watch is he can fight you two or three different ways. He can box, he can counter, he can work behind his long jab. You know, we wanted questions answered about Bivol already. His left eye is bleeding, that's in a bad spot. And he's dealing with adversity for the first time on our air. And he's landing some solid shots himself. And doing some mean counter punches, son. I love the counter punching I'm seeing from Bivol. Two of the scheduled 12. Barrera has a title belt. Excuse me, Bivol has a title belt. Barrera had the choice of which title belt he wanted to try to fight for tonight. He chose to fight Bivol instead of Kovalev, despite the fact that the money was less. Guys, did anyone see what caused that cut? No, I, I did see. not. That could be a a pivotal moment. Well, yep. well at, if we're looking for um, weaknesses in Bivol. Possibly he cuts easily. I didn't see what caused that. I didn't see Barrera land some, you know, really clean shots, nor did I see a headbutt. Well, the referee didn't declare the headbutt, so it must have been a punch. 13th fight of Bivol's professional career, and again, according to our information, the first time he has ever been cut. Spectacular amateur career for Bivol. Two big wins and 15 losses, so he has a deep backlog of experience. And now the cut man in Bivol's corner is Dmitry Lushnikov, and he goes to work. Dmitry, work faster. One, two, three combinations. Easy, easy. Hit him on the overhand right. Relax yourself. Jab him. Jab, jab in that overhand right. Make it quick. Quick combination. And then come on the what caused the hit, but the heads collided right there as both guys were coming up to throw a left hook. The heads landed first, and then Bivol's hook landed uh, partially, but that hit but is definitely what caused that cut over that right eye. And that's good news for Bivol. If you're a Bivol fan, if you are wondering how his skin holds up, anyone can be cut from a clash of heads like that. Right, and if the fight is stopped because of the cut, Bivol should not be incurring a loss because the cut is not the product of a punch. By the way, in the first two rounds, Bivol is averaging nine landed jabs per round. The division average is under five landed jabs per round. It shows you the kinds of skills that he has put together. And, and also, he's, being, he's faced with a, an opponent who's not cooperated with him, who's not just kind of yielding, giving in, who is bringing his own skills into the ring, and Bivol is remaining a, a responsible boxer puncher. The most impressive thing about Bivol right now is that he's using his legs for defense first. When you see Sullivan come after him, like right there, he bounces back with his feet first, then he comes back and attacks with counter punches. That's the most impressive thing I've seen about him all night. No question, Roy, his mobility without wasting movement to play defense with his legs and get distance with his legs is very impressive. Guys, what a jab. I mean, he is landing a lightning jab in there over and over against Barrera. Barrera with a pretty good right hand, partially blocked by Bivol. And but to Roy's point, Bivol looks really good with his one-two. To Roy's point, you're right. He did that with his gloves. 
gym, but also all the steam was off the Barrera right hand because Bivol took that half step back, bounced back just like that, and the, the right hand, even had it landed, wouldn't have landed with much. And he does that when he comes back. combination by Bivol. <laughs> wow. Blood flowing again from the cut outside the right eye. So we get a really good look at Bivol facing a certain kind of adversity, fighting against a better fighter than he's been in with before, and trying to take over the fight with his skills, and now their heads come together again, and this time it's Barrera. You okay? And now we may have evened it up. All right. Time in. I don't think he's cut, though. No blood yet. Boy, why is this, this clash of heads continuing to happen? Two orthodox fighters, skillful amateurs and pros. Experienced. Why do they keep banging heads like that? Because both guys are thinking offensive minded right now. Now, B Bowl is doing some countering, but both guys are thinking high offense. When you get two guys thinking high offense like that, the heads will come together because both guys are putting a lot into every punch. So when they come with a punch, they bring all power, a head, shoulders, everything is coming forward. Yeah, no one's scared in there. No. Two true professionals going in. But the one who appears to be holding his game together coherently is Dimitri Bivol, who You've is throwing and landing combinations. You've made the point often, Jim, what separates fighters on the world-class level is speed. You know, who has the speed to compete at the elite level, and Bivol is quicker. Less than 10 seconds to go in round number three. Bivol has put forth a lot of offense here in this round. Already, Round three, Bivol has tripled Barrera in terms of the number of punches landed in the fight, 55 to 19. April 18, it's the return of my show, The Fight Game. Join me for one-of-a-kind insights and commentary on the biggest stories and issues facing the sport of boxing. Bernard Hopkins and Max Kellerman on the show as well. April 28, live boxing returns to HBO with Daniel Jacobs taking on Macy and Seleski in front of his hometown Brooklyn fans at the Barclays Center. Also that night, fellow Brooklynite Jarrell Big Baby Miller faces off with Johan Duhopa. And May 5 on HBO pay-per-view, superstars Canelo Alvarez and Gennady Golovkin meet in the rematch of of their fight from last September that ended in a highly disputed, controversial, frustrating draw. <laughs> Round four of the schedule 12. And scoring the fight for us, as always, our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. Harold, how do you have the first three rounds of Bivol and Barrera? <laughs> okay, Jim, I got a three to nothing, 30 to 27, Dimitri Bivol. Jim, I'm really impressed. He's a really good fighter. That left jab is something else. He's got a very good left jab. He throws a lot of good combinations. I mean, really good stuff. Look at that combination, you know? He lands both shots. He lands the left jab. He lands the straight right hand. He lands the left hook that wobbles Barrera. He lands another left hook that wobbles Barrera. And here's where Bivol is also really good, Jim. He's good in exchanges because he's the quicker handed fighter, the straighter puncher, the better technician, and lands with more pop. So in exchanges, he's extremely dangerous as Barrera tries to ward him off. This has been a really good fight, but you feel like the whole time that Barrera is just one clean, I mean, not Barrera, um, Bivol is one clean counter shot away from victory. And uh, just as that happens, it seems like Sullivan finds a way to neutralize it and get back in the fight. Yeah, Sullivan is showing a good job of, of being resolute, staying in there, sturdy, handling big punches when he needs to. The question is, how can he win a round against a guy who is out throwing him and out landing him constantly? As the fight, but there's another hard right hand by Bivol. And what you would like to see Sullivan do right here, because Bivol is so much quicker than him, is going a body attack, but he's not doing that. He's going all head. If you went to the body some, 
he could make a difference in this fight because if you look at Bivol's arms, Bivol is starting to tire just a little bit, and Bivol has never had this type of opposition in front of him. So if Barrera was smart, he'd attack the body now and try to even this fight up some. But if he attacked the body, wouldn't he be running the risk, Roy, that Bivol, with his much faster hands, could counter him upstairs? He's running that risk anyway. See that? He's running that risk anyway, Jim. If you throw at his head, he's still like that right there. It doesn't matter. You're running that risk because you're out there. He's so much quicker that you're running the risk of getting hit with the, with the speed punches anyway. You may as well get something out of it. Yeah, as usual, and we, we see this a bit in boxing, just the way it works, because it's a one-on-one -on -one sport. When one fighter has a clear-cut advantage, is, is the superior, skillful, or athletic fighter, in this case, Bivol is both, the other guy has to do something that may hasten his demise, but at least gives him a chance to win. And that's what the body shot would do if he could do that. And you see the graphic that says Bivol has landed 28 jabs to this moment in the fight. And, and three for Sullivan Barrera. So Barrera's already lost the jabbing contest. The question is, can he somehow tilt the fight in his favor and be a counter punching? And he's still trying. One of the mistakes you're doing is that when he starts throwing, remember we talked about that? Break off to the side. Move, step, break it. You want to block everything. And you're blocking a lot of the shots, but you're trying to block everything. Counter him. Everything is good. You're doing very good. Just right. You see the ball, then his faint jab, lead left hook. At the main, Southern reached that hand forward, which is a beautiful shot. Then you see him correctly in the straight right hand. Wow, Barrera is trying to throw the left hook to the head. Boom, there's the right hand. So what I'm saying, Jim, is no matter if you go to the head or the body, his hands are quicker. He's going to count on you anyway. So get something worth uh, out of your buck and go to the body to invest in later on. It's a compelling point. Let's see if Barrera will think of it or try to make that adjustment as time goes by. What Derek Santos wanted to talk about to his fighter between rounds was his desire to block shots instead of moving to the side to avoid them. So that may be what Barrera is thinking of at this moment. It's the last thing his trainer said to him before he left the corner. That was a good body shot. Straight right hand lead over the top by Dimitri Bivol. He yep. lands the jab, he lands straight right hand leads, he lands his left hook. What I like about Bivol, besides the feet that I talked about earlier, is his explosiveness too. When he punches, he explodes with every punch when he, when he thinks he has an opening. He doesn't wait, he doesn't walk into you. He throws it quick and it's over with. Like that, he's boom, 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 and it's over with. No waste of time, waste of time. He's done a pretty good job inhibited from the bleeding over the right eye of Dimitri Bivol after heads clashed in the first round. There's just a little seepage of blood at this moment, but by and large, the cut has been under control. And as you saw, their heads came together again later in the fight. And uh, a butt that Herrera got the worst of, but not enough to draw blood. You can also see, comparing Bivol to Kovalev, who we'll see in the main event tonight, and who we're very familiar with throughout his title reign, Bivol's not heavy-handed like Kovalev. No, he's not. He's a sharp puncher. But so far, this performance is bad news for the light heavyweight division because Bivol has had to, you know, taste his own blood. It's been in a position to obscure his vision. He's in with a determined fighter. Pereira has conceded nothing here, even psychologically. And Bivol has just beaten him up every round. You yeah, can't hardly put a hand on, on Bivol's face, Max. That's very discouraging for Pereira because he can't land a punch hard. Within the past couple of weeks, Former light heavyweight champion, now retired, HBO expert commentator Andre Ward visited Bivol's training camp just to get a look, just to size him up. And quite obviously, he was impressed, had good things to say as well. That was a jab by Barrera. Keep him up, keep him up. Barrera kind of stumbling in, trying to land the body shot. Might have been on the belt line. There's a right hand right. upstairs by Barrera. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a straight right hand by Bivol, and 
Herrera just walked in and ate it. He did eat it, but I don't know how what? well he ate it. Step back, step back, step back. Hey! Sergey Kovalev. Most recently fought here in this room with a knockout victory over Anatoly Chabransky in November. A lot of people derided the quality of the victory, saying, oh, well, Chabransky was totally made to order for him and walked right into him. Tonight, he'll be facing an entirely different style. Kovalev, as you know, from Kelibinsk, Russia, one of the poorest cities in all of Russia, had an extremely difficult life growing up and has withstood a lot of hardship and difficulty to get to where he is. He was... Uh, steamrolling through the division, had a long knockout string, was 29 or 30 0 and 1 uh, before losing back to back fights to Andre Ward, including the stoppage on body shots in the second of their two meetings against each other. Through round five, Barrera landing six punches per round. In his last five fights, he was averaging 16 punches landed per round. So obviously, he's having a harder time mounting offense and landing punches against Dimitri Bivol than was the case against all of his other opponents, like Joe Smith, like Felix Valera. None of those guys were nearly as quick-footed nor quick-handed as this guy Bivol is, Jim. Right. It made it a lot easier for him to land punches on guys who are sitting ducks or still targets. When you find a guy like Bivol who can move, who uses his feet to gauge his distance very well, who also has quick hands along with that, it makes it very difficult to make contact with him. The, 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 the judgment of distance is maybe one of the most underrated skills in boxing. Vasily Lomachenko right now, I think, is the best example of a guy who understands distance at every moment of the fight extremely well. But Bivol, you see, has a very good understanding of distance and how to use it to his advantage. Well, Lomachenko's answer to distance is angles. You know, he may he may at sometimes be within your punching range, but he's not in a position where you can hit it. He's stepping to one side or the other, stepping around you. And, of course, he frustrates his opponents so much that ultimately they quit on their stools. Another attempted body shot for Barrera. The ball partially blocking it down low. Good body shot. Huh? Now this time Barrera gets the right hand through to the body. And now there's a hook to the because of the body shots. You feel me? So Barrera finding more offensive answers now as round six progresses. Barrera Barrera's taking advantage, and he did it in the last round with a right hook upstairs where Bivol sometimes waits a little bit too long in the pocket after he throws a combination. Sometimes he's standing a little bit straight in the pocket, and kind of at the end of the combination, when it looks like the exchange is over, Barrera gives him something to think about on the way out. Bivol has lost a lot of steam on his punches right now, too, it seems, Max. Yeah. On some of them, not all of them, but just in some way, maybe he's a little fatigued right now. That right hand still has stuff, but I started to say the right hand was pretty good. Mm -hmm. Now there, Barrera throws his right hand in return. That's now why Bivol lands the straight right again. That's why I thought Barrera should have went, went to the body earlier because he would have had uh, Bivol at this point early in the fight. Now their punches are about even. Uh, Bivol throws a good one here and there, but their punches, on a, for the most part, are about even now. But Bivol still quicker. Yeah, he's quicker. Or maybe Bivol is sensing that. There's a little given Barrera. Good body shot. Right to be a little more offensive, Roy. Boy, Barrera is really taking your advice on the body shots, Roy. And he landed a left hand to the body there moments ago. Maybe his best body shot so far in the fight. Immediately following live boxing tonight, it's Real Sports featuring an extended segment revisiting an undercover expose on the enslavement of child jockeys in Middle Eastern camel racing and the surprising events which have since brought the practice to an end. April 10, join us for the premiere of Andre the Giant, a documentary film that chronicles the life and times of a literally larger-than-life figure who captured the imaginations of so many on his way to becoming one of the most beloved figures in wrestling history. Your hands go on the inside. You're hitting him, all right? You understand? The hook to the body all the time is there. Here, as a result from the body work that uh, 
Barrera was doing. He lands a left hook to the head right here. Great left hook right there on that cut. And that's one of the few times we've seen him land a good head shot uh, solidly tonight. Well said. Absolutely right. CompuBox numbers coming out of the sixth round into the seventh. Bivol landing 115 out of 380 to Barrera, 38 out of 316. So Bivol continues to basically triple Barrera in terms of landed punches counted by CompuBox. Let's see how Harold Letterman has counted <laughs> up the score so far. Harold? Look at you. Look at it. Six to nothing. 60 to 54, Dimitri Bivol. Right, right, right. Jimmy's out punching him, out boxing him, out doing everything in every single round. I mean, it's all Dimitri Bivol. If you watch the punches, they're fighting this fight in the middle of the round, but Bivol is out punching him by a mile. Six to nothing, Dimitri Bivol. So, Roy Jones, if Harold Letterman is on target, and the scores are anywhere in the same range, it suggests that the possibility of winning a decision is getting out of reach for Sullivan Barrera. How would he construct a knockout? Well, uh, winning the decision is not out of reach yet because we're just in the sixth round, and it's a 12 round, well, we're in the seventh round, it's a 12 round fight, so if he starts now, he can at least get a draw in it. But the best way for him to construct a knockout is to go to the body hard, dedicate these next few rounds to the body, then try to come up and land something big over the top. If he doesn't do that, he's going to let this kid stay too strong, too sharp, too uh, compacted, and be able to land a big shot himself and cause Barrera some problems down the line. When Bivol can hold himself composed and together, he is a very compact puncher. He's got tight punches, he's very sharp with it, and if he hits you with a compact punch like that, he's going to cause some issues. Like that right hand right there. Bivol's jab continues commanding, quick. Occasionally knocking Barrera back. There's another right hand for Bivol. <laughs> and right now I'm looking at how bad does Barrera want it? Because if he wants it bad enough, he has a chance here. But if he doesn't want it bad enough, Bivol will walk away with it right here. Hand shot by Bivol. Barrera walked into it. Still going forward, trying to get into position. Left hook lands for Bivol. And then the feet got him out of position to be countered. What Barrera's done so far is put Bivol in a fight at least. Bivol hasn't had a fight like this yet. Where the day, you know, the next day, Roy, he wakes up and knows he was in a real fight. No, they've all been walkovers by and large. And that's why I said that right now, you can tell him how bad he really wants it. Because he still can win it if he wants. We've never seen Bivol at this point in a fight. Well, if we thought Bivol might have been slowing down a little bit in the last round, I want to beg the differ based on what I saw in the last 30 it, seconds there. There's swelling over Bivol's left eye that looks like a little golf ball is forming there. Where's the mouthpiece? Water. Give him some water. All right, this cut is getting bigger. You got to iron it out. You see the ice being applied over the left eye, the area that Max Kellerman identified. Here you see before laying a jab, followed by a clean jab, followed by a good straight right hand right over the top of Barrell's jab. First couple of rounds, Jim, that would have caused some issues. Right now, because of the fatigue factor, Barrell take, took them very well. Round eight of a scheduled 12, Dimitri Bivol against Sullivan Barrera, Russia against Cuba, light heavyweight division, winner of this fight, hoping to get into position to fight perhaps Sergey Kovalev, if Kovalev can win in his assignment in the main event against Igor Mikhalkin. That was a good try, for a good right hand to the right, right hand to the body by Dmitry Bivol. Good try to counter the right over the top, of the jab over the top by Bivol earlier. He missed it, but it was a great try. Himatoma over the left eye like it's it, it's not like a Rockman against Holyfield Jim but it's that same kind of swelling could be from that second head but we saw man yes I would it looks like it was caused by a head but
saw the graphic toward the end of the last round that said that Nicole had landed 55 jabs to three for Barrera. Coming into the fight, I would have told you that Sullivan Barrera has a pretty good jab. How big a problem is it, Roy Jones, if, if one of your weapons, something that you've depended on in a lot of your other fights, seems to have been completely taken away? Well, speed neutralizes things like that, and um, uh, Bivol's speed has neutralized that jab. Not only that, but Bivol also keeps his hands up very high, and he has quick hands. So usually when a guy has quick hands and keeps his hands high like that, it's very difficult to land a jab on him, especially when you're a heavy-handed jabber like Sullivan Barrera is. We're in the eighth. There are four more rounds to go after this. Max Kellerman correct in saying that the, the swelling that's emerging over the left eye of Bivol begins to look a little bit like a golf ball. Yes, it's not quite Kasim Rahman uh, against Evander Holyfield. He doesn't look like a hammerhead shark yet. Right. But there's, you know, and, and by the way, he's winning every round, Bivol, and he's comfortably ahead, obviously, and he's looking good. So he's not being tested by punches so much, but still, cut over the right eye, swelling on the left side of the forehead, deep in a fight against an experienced guy who hasn't given up. He is being tested physically in a way. And all, all that means if he walks away with a win, useful experience, right? Of course. Watch your head, Watch and we're also head. seeing that he responds to, okay. to adversity, right. a type Time of adversity, in. calmly so far. And another headbutt there. And Harvey Doc, with his body language, suggested that the fighter who got the worst of that headbutt was Sullivan Barrera. But it can't feel good for Bivol under any circumstances with a cut over one eye and a knot over the other. Well, when you want every round, Jim, it can't feel too bad either, though. <laughs> the hand speed is remarkable. I mean, you just don't see many 175-pound fighters who can put punches together like this with the velocity and the style and the effect that Dimitri Vivol is creating in there. The velocity is right, Jim. He's using it to create power. And he was stepping with Barrera there. He senses something in Barrera weakening. No, it's not, it's not important. It's not that serious. Oh, he'll be all right. Dima, just feign him. Feign him, you're doing good. Feign him and then counter. You understand? Listen, listen. You got to work. You got to work. You got to be first. See where you started? You were first and he didn't do anything. Okay? Yeah. You got to keep your guard up. You keep your guard up, he can't do anything. Time! Time! Time in! Neither of these fighters have a knockout past the eighth round. Bivol has been past the eighth twice, so this marks the third time in his career that he goes to the ninth round. Sullivan Barrera has been past the eighth round only a few times. That's a little surprising because both of his last two fights went the 12 round distance. So Barrera is the proven commodity over the course of the 12 round distance, but the way he's being schooled in the ring tonight by the younger, faster, seemingly better fighter may change that equation. Bivol, uh, again, tripling Barrera in terms of landed punches and humiliating his jab. Barrera's landed five jabs in the whole fight. He came in averaging five landed jabs per round in his last several fights. I like that, Jim. Humiliating the jab. In other words, he stopped using it because it's being embarrassed in a way. Exactly. He realized it wasn't effective in any way. Earlier in the round, Roy landed a real jabbing kind of right hand to the body, like right on the side of the heart. It seemed to affect Barrera's pace a little bit here, too. Yes, it did. And it also made Barrera throw a few right hands to the body for a second. He threw two or three consecutively, then he stopped again. But I think that body shot that Bivol hit him with reminded him to go to the body. 
This is the first time in the fight that I think I've sensed that Bivol is trying to get a little bit of rest in a round. And he has slowed his own pace just a little bit here and isn't initiating contact as often as he appears to try to get just a little breather in round nine coming toward the finish. Guerrero landed a good right hand right there. To which Bivol had to react. Oh, and now he comes back with a hard right hand of his own. Throws it again, throws it again. Want to stop my right hand? You better, or I'm going to keep coming. Left hook lands for Bivol. Oh, headbutt again. Headbutt again. Bivol looking over Barrera's shoulder at the big screen monitor in the corner of the room. They might not want to do that. They want to look at the blood and the knot. They both will realize tomorrow morning that they were in a fight last night. Good job by Bivol. By the way, even if you're thinking, well, yeah, but Barrera's done his damage with his head. But against Bivol, who can finish you quickly, you've got to stick around this long to be able to do that damage with your head. Barrera's, you know, ring savvy has kept him, you know, upright in this fight through three quarters of well, it. Well, Bivol came out so sharp. So aggressive, so quick with both the left and the right hand in the first few rounds that Time. no other opponent he's faced would have stayed in for those three rounds. It would have been over. And there's Sergey Kovalev. As his hands are being wrapped and now gloved. And the New York State Athletic Commission observes. Kovalev, of course, in his second fight with his new trainer, the Uzbek trainer, Abror. Person Pulotov doesn't speak English, does speak Russian. That may be the heart of the relationship between Person Pulotov and Kovala. And there is Igor Mikhalkin, who was a teammate uh, of uh, Sergei Kovalev's for years in the Russian amateur program, and uh, about whom Kovalev says he's a really nice guy. I like him a lot. They get along. Barrera has landed in single digits in all nine rounds against Bivol. En route to CompuBox numbers, which entering the 10th round say Bivol is 184 out of 593 to Barrera 57 out of 469. Harold Letterman, how do you have this score three quarters of the way through? Okay, Jim, I got a 90 to 81, nine rounds to nothing, Dimitri Bivol. Jimmy's just out boxing him. The fight's been, you know, basically fought in the middle of the round, but Bivol's out boxing him, and, you know, you sort of punch that numbers, which are enormous in favor of Bivol. Keeps landing that left jab and that straight right hand in the combinations. Nine to nothing, Dimitri Bivol. So far, Bivol has answered questions, the questions that Rare has been able to ask of him well, I think. But you see why these kind of fights are important, no matter how good a prospect looks in terms of developing a prospect into a real-world champion. This is the kind of experience, should Bivol go on to win this fight, that he'll be able to take to, to yet another level of opponent, if and when that opponent should push Bivol physically and damage him, and Bivol, you know, has to deal with that in the late rounds of the fight. So we can see, Roy Jones, that Bivol's physical qualities, the speed, the quickness, the punching power, seemingly with both hands, are going to be a problem for just about anybody in the division. When he goes back into the gym, what do he and his team want to work on in terms of technique or mental approach to make it better? Just mental approach about staying strong and staying sharp, as sharp as he was in round one, in round eight through 12. Uh, right now, as you see, in round six, seven, and eight, he slowed just a little. Wasn't quite as sharp and um, precise as he was in rounds one through six. So you got to learn how to take that same precision and sharpness with you throughout the whole fight. If you become a deadly puncher from round one to round 12, that makes you very difficult to deal with. So that's the one thing, if I were him, uh, that I would go home and work on. Because withstanding the damage from the butts and getting through it and continuing to perform, to perform, add an extra layer of confidence. Yeah, that adds an extra layer of confidence because now you know if that happens to you in a big fight that you can handle that, that's not something that you've never seen before. So yes, that does add confidence. And I think, Roy, you're right about Sting as sharp. He's boxing well throughout, but something somewhere around round six or seven, 
he went from boxer puncher who might knock you out with any shot to more pure boxing mode. Yes. A I little agree. less dangerous with the shots. Yes. Well, I wonder if that was a conscious realization on his part. Ed, doesn't seem unlikely to get a knockout here tonight. This no, guy is durable and tough. No, I don't think it was, Jim, because he still was at time who saw opportunities he was going after knockouts at time when I didn't think he really even had to. So I think he's still been going for the knockout or going for the shots when he see him. It's just that fatigue played a part. Yeah. Time! The, the elite pound for pound fighters stay elite rounds one through 12. And we've got two more rounds to go. Meanwhile, April 28th, Brooklyn's Daniel Jacobs returns to the ring in front of his hometown fans at the Barclays Center against Poland's Macy Edge Zaleski. Also that night, undefeated heavyweight Jarrell Big Baby Miller, also from Brooklyn, faces off with Frenchman Johan Duapa. Immediately following that night's live boxing, stick around for Canelo Golovkin 2. The fight game preview as we count down to the middleweight super showdown. And May 5, live on HBO pay-per-view, it's the Canelo Alvarez Gennady Golovkin rematch. They fought to a highly disputed draw last September, and this time each fighter looks to leave no doubt as to who is the world's top middleweight. Bivol has landed just 14 body shots among his total of 206 connects. So if you're looking for a fly in the ointment, so to speak, that might be the idea that maybe Bivol should throw more to the body. Roy Jones, what do you think? He's so good upstairs. That may be the reason why he's not focusing all that much to the body. He has a head to it with the head bust taking place too, Jim. It's not smart for him to stick his head in that much more because he's gotten three pretty vicious head busts already. Ready, so why would you stick your head down up for the body shots when you know that it's very possible or very likely that you're going to catch a fourth head butt? So maybe body shots are for another night. Yes, exactly. You, you win the fight very big with head shots. Why, why change it? And especially since the first two I felt were really purely accidental. The last headbutt, it looked to me like Barrera was leading with his head a little bit, like he thought maybe that's something that had worked for him. And hey, look, if my head is in there and your face happens to be there, that's your problem. Yeah, I just think that's just how Barrera fights, though. I don't think he was trying to, like you say, I don't think it was on purpose. I just think that's kind of who Barrera is. And when he punches right there, he brings his head with his punches anyway. So. He does, and that was a good right hand he landed. Barrera. A couple of good moments for Barrera. Oh, good there. body shot. And Bivol responds to the body shot with a three punch combination. And then a stiff jab up the middle. And there's another stiff jab up the middle by Dimitri Bivol. Bivol is 27 years old. Long amateur career in Russia. 268 wins and 15 losses as an amateur. Very focused on becoming a professional star in the United States. He presents modestly, Max, but at the end of the day, you walk out of the room and there's no question what he thinks. He thinks he's a star. Yeah, and, and he has a charming personality, and, and he shows humility, but he, you know he's confident. And he's really, this is the, the kind of developmental fight and the kind of fight where we are getting some answers from Bivol. He looks like the real deal, the way he's handled this so far. Now, this was a really good test for him. He would have been more impressive to many in obvious ways had he just blown Barrera out. But we'd have, we'd know less about him. He was immodest enough to tell Andre Ward when Ward visited his training camp, I'm surprised you retired. I was focusing on what it was going to take to beat you. Ooh. Well, based on this performance, more than Bivol has at the moment, I would guess, to beat Andre Ward. But. In, in other words, Bivol seems to me to still be developing. He didn't try to tell Andre that he had enough to beat him right now. Right. But, you know, the way he's looked until now, you thought maybe he was already all the way there. And this fight is giving us some answers. There's still room for improvement. But oh, yeah. good body shot. What a body shot oh, by Bivol. Yes. Perfectly timed. Hey! Right in the belly. Dude, and wow. Sullivan Barrera is heaving just a bit as he walks back to his corner. Yeah, he caught him coming in, so that one, Jim. That was pretty bad. Хорошо. Ну смотри, надо больше прихватывать. 
Сейчас чуть-чуть отдал инициативу. Very Давай. good, very good. You gotta do a little better. Pressure, paint them, double jab, push them, cut the ring off, pressure, and let your hands go. Three minutes, three minutes I need. Give me water. Give me three minutes. But you fought for this, you fought for your daughter. Three minutes. Trainer Derek Sanchez, or Santos, with the last couple of words of advice, Sullivan Barrera, they touch gloves before round 12. Two legitimate sportsmen. Two guys with real amateur training, two guys with legitimate boxing skills. One of them a little bit younger, quicker, and more vibrant in there tonight. Oh. Uh, Bivol's still looking for a knockout, Roy. Over 500 Answer amateur three. fights on, on, on this play tonight, Jim. Over 500, maybe over 600. Listen, you know for how many years you turn on Olympic boxing or amateur boxing, and in the international level, you notice it's Cubans and Eastern Europeans and when is that going to show up at the highest level of the pros? Folks, here it is. Right now. Kovalev, Bivol, Barrera, better be as. Stop me when you get to an American. <laughs> and I asked Bivol in the meeting, I said, you know, we always talk here in the United States about how spectacular the Cuban program is and how well trained they all are as amateurs. Do you folks in Russia feel the same way about them? And he said, oh, yes, absolutely. We start with the postulate that the Cubans are the best, and they're the people that you have to be. So no difference in the way the cultures of the United States and Russia view Cuba. They see Cuba as the top of the amateur boxing world. It also tells you if you want to see more American champions, we have to get our amateur. Oh, down goes Pereira, and you can see Bipo thinking to himself, I still have a shot at a knockout. You can just see it in his face. Can Barrera get up? Is Harvey Doc going to let him continue? No. It's a stoppage, and Bibo gets the TKO in round number 12. Jim, you identified just now what was so impressive about that. Roy and I were talking earlier about he went at how Bivol seemed to go into boxer mode. 